Hi guys, well next up we're going to be checking out the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming Velocitor. Now if you're a regular on the channel you'll know that I don't usually touch AMD boards as that's usually covered by another editor at Vortez. But we've had a few changes in the team and it's time now for me to take on the AMD platform as well. Which should actually work out quite well for you the viewer as it will give a good balance of both sides from AMD and Intel. Velocitor is touted as a mid-range offering under the B550 chipset and so it is ready there for Ryzen Gen 3. It comes with a mixture of USB 3.2 including a Type-C header for the front panel, 2.5 gig Ethernet around the back and twin PCI Express driven M.2 slots. So this board is available to buy now. It comes with a price tag of 219 in the US, 226 in the UK and then 400 in Australia. And so this board is definitely not at that kind of entry level price point. In fact, it sits in the upper region of the B550s in terms of the pricing. Uh, so let's check it out in plenty of detail and see if it really is worth that asking price. Before we begin, today's video is brought to you by ASRock and their Z490 Extreme 4. This is the company's mid-range offering under the Intel Z490 banner. It has full support for Intel's 10th gen processors and future releases using LGA1200. This board also carries a rather capable audio package which includes the Nehemic software suite which allows you to optimize the sound according to the devices that you are using. And not wanting to miss out on the RGB lighting, Extreme 4 is also equipped with RGB headers which also include addressable options. ASRock's polychrome RGB is readily available allowing you to fully customize the lighting from these headers and across the board. For more info on the ASRock Z490 Extreme 4, please check out that link in the description. Okay, well let's do a quick unboxing on our Velocitor. This is the packaging that it arrives in. Nicely designed there. We've got the carry handle up at the top, the usual sort of thing. Over on the back we have those features and of course the technical spec. And inside that box the first thing you're going to see is the accessories which consist of these documents here which are the software guide and the quick installation guide, that is basically your user manual. We've got this mysterious looking envelope here which includes some handy little things such as velcro cable ties, driver CD, postcard and stickers. Still not sure why we're, st we're getting the, uh, the driver CD in this particular format. Uh, USB would be much better. Who has a DVD drive nowadays? It's going to be very few people. We have the M.2 standoffs and screws, four SATA cables, and then underneath all of that we have the board there in the anti-static bag, and it has the foam padding as well. Okay, so here is Velocitor. Being under the Phantom Gaming banner, the design of this board will come as no surprise. The overall theme is quite appealing, it uses gunmetal, black and red, and it should blend in well with the rest of the system components due to that neutral palette. ASRock has given Velocitor integrated RGB lighting which involves the chipset heatsink and that rear panel cover. The lighting there can be modified using the polychrome software. Now in terms of the size, Velocitor fits into that ATX form factor so it is going to fit into most mid towers. In our closer look, we'll begin there at the CPU socket, which of course is AMD AM4 and has support there for 3rd gen AMD Ryzen processors. Now in terms of the power delivery, we have a 14 phase design, which uses DigiPower and DRMOS. ASRock use this on both their Intel and AMD models. As well as this, we have a huge lineup of Nichicon 12K black caps, which are dotted around the board, and those premium 60 amp chokes. So we're still getting similar features to those higher end offerings. Covering the VRM, we have two heat sinks, which are joined together with a copper heat pipe. And in our web review, we're gonna be testing out the VRM cooling, so be sure to check out that link in the description for that particular performance. Performance. Behind the top heatsink we have a CPU power which is an 8 plus 4 pin socket and in what is now common we have solid pins for all the connectors which are stronger and have the potential though to carry heavier loads. Now in terms of the fan headers there are 7 in total, 2 up at the top for CPU fan, 2 down the side, 2 down the bottom and then 1 in the centre and all of those can be assigned for case fans 
or water pumps. And for additional RGB, we have four headers, two at the top and then two at the bottom of the board, with two of them being addressable. Moving on to the memory, there are four slots here with support for dual channel DDR4, up to 128 gig and up to 4733 megahertz. And right next to that DDR4 section, we have two front panel headers for your case. There is a USB 3.2 Gen 2, which supplies that type C. And then we also have a USB 3.2 Gen 1 as well. So that will give you support for newer cases with that type C on the front panel. Moving on to the storage, we have six SATA 3.6G ports for any SATA based devices. All of those are right angled. And then we have two M.2 slots. The top one utilizes PCI Express 4, as that is linked directly to the CPU, whereas the lower slot makes use of PCI Express 3 by 2. So we don't get the full speed there, and that is delivered via the chipset. There is another M.2 in the center of the board, but that is for Wi Fi. Both our M.2 slots have respective heat sinks which provide supplementary cooling for the SSDs which will be installed. And down at the bottom of the board there is a debug panel for diagnostics and we also get the onboard power and reset buttons which are always handy if you've got this on a test bench. If we take a look at the expansion area we have two PCI Express X16s. The upper is PCI Express 4 but that lower one is PCI Express 3. And then we also get two PCI Express 3.0 X1s. And the modes for the X16s are 6 16 and 4. And again, just like the M.2 situation, that top slot gets the full 16 lanes from the CPU. So if you're going to be running a single GPU, we recommend going for that one. Just AMD Crossfire is supported on this board, Nvidia SLI isn't. And ASRock has given both full size PCI Express the steel reinforcement for better longevity and an improved latch and extra anchor points. And this is what it looks like when both our slots are populated with dual slot graphics cards. Immediately next to the PCI Express we have the audio solution which is based around the Realtek ALC1220 codec and as part of that audio package we get a handful of extra components such as those high-end audio caps, surge protection, separated channels and isolated circuitry. And last of all we come to the rear I.O. panel which consists of the following features. A HDMI 2 port, PS2 keyboard and mouse, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, two USB 2 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 that comes in the form of a Type A and a Type C, 2.5 gig LAN port that uses a Dragon RTL 8125BG controller with another two USB 2 ports and then the eight channel audio jacks with optical out. And so a variety of ports there on that back panel but I must admit there are a few disappointments namely the four USB 2 ports which are a waste of space and the inclusion of the antenna holes but no module included would have been much better to include more USB 3.2 here Alrighty, well that is the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming Velocitor. This is a nice looking board, it definitely has a good assortment of features, but the pricing is far too ambitious. Just to list off some of the good things about it, it has the seven fan headers across the board in great places, USB 3.2 Type-C for the front panel, it has the two heat sinks for your M.2, LED debug with the onboard power and reset, but where it does fall short is on this back panel here. We've got the four USB 2 ports which should now be phased out, a lot of empty space there which could easily be populated and there is no Wi-Fi included which at this price point of around 220 US UK we do expect more. Just have a look at this comparison here using Scan UK's Compare Tool. You can see Velocitor here against some rival boards and it offers similar features and yet the price is vastly different. So we believe that ASRock should really readjust the price for this. It would be fair enough if they included more features that warrant that cost, but as it stands, this is a $150 to $180 board. Now, if you guys want to see the performance results from this particular board here, with the thermal performance as well for the, the VRM and also the chipset, be sure to head on over to the review, which will be on Vortex.net and also in the description for you. Just click on that link. Thanks for watching today, guys. Really appreciate the support. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.